it. So if you've got a, a part sun or shade situation, a stilby is a really nice plant. A stilby is a group of plants that's been around a long time, also called false spirea. Um, I love a stilby. Uh, however, they are not terribly drought tolerant. So it is one plant that if you've got a sunnier situation, a part sun, you're going to want to make sure you do give it ample moisture. Um, maybe mix in a little bit of uh, peat or our one-step soil conditioner or even all-purpose potting mix when you're planting it. Um, wonderful spiky flowers on that. This particular one is called Chocolate Shogun. It has really cool dark burgundy, uh, almost chocolatey brown foliage. Most of them uh, just have traditional green foliage. So really neat variety. Came out a few years ago, but we just haven't had good numbers of it. And the ones that we did have were quite small. Really great plant though, uh, kind of uh, fuzzy red stems. Uh, this will have a whitish flower to it. So traditional still be flower, kind of a flower spike. Um, really nice for, uh, for a shady area, especially if you have a lot of green plants in the shade. Uh, the white, the contrast of the white against the burgundy is going to show up really nice. This is only going to get about 12 to 18 inches tall, so not a terribly big plant here. While we're talking kind of sh more shade-loving plants, um, this is a new introduction from Proven Winners. Um, this is a, uh, a bleeding heart or luxuriant type bleeding heart here called Pink Diamonds. So you can kind of see it has a fairly traditional um, bleeding heart type flower, but it has this fuzzy foliage to it. And unlike uh, regular or common or old fashioned uh, bleeding heart, this one does not go dormant in the summertime. So it comes up, it's got this cool ferny foliage, which I think looks nice all season long. It blooms much, much longer. It'll basically bloom most of the summer. Uh, so it blooms a long time where the common bleeding heart or old fashioned bleeding heart comes up, blooms beautifully, um, really striking plant. And then as soon as the heat kicks in early June or something, the plant goes completely dormant. It just turns yellow, goes away. There's nothing there. This will stay up all season. So you've got that cool ferny foliage and the pink flowers basically all spring and summer long. So that's a really uh, nice introduction from proven winners. This is another native. Um, it's called wood poppy or celandine poppy. There is a, um, an invasive um, Eurasian celandine. Um, this is not it. This is the native one to North America here um, called wood poppy. Um, sometimes hard for us to get a hold of. Um, really neat plant. Great for moist woodland areas. Uh, great for naturalizing a shady spot. Can get slightly aggressive. So just, you know, keep that in mind. It may take over, uh, you know, an area or you may have some to dig up later on down the road. So. Um, cool plant though with those beautiful butter yellow flowers gets these fuzzy seed pods um, Really interesting leaf shape uh, really a neat woodland plant So I really like the celandine poppy a lot. This is a uh, dianthus right here called spiked punch and um, This is another one of those cases where I wish you could smell through the uh, through the camera lens here This has a very strong fragrance a kind of a clove like fragrance uh, maybe a little sweeter than clove but kind of a spicy clove fragrance. It has steel blue foliage. It's very short. It's a wonderful border plant, um, six-ish inches tall, but it has this really unique frilled pink flower with a red, dark red or dark burgundy center to it. So it's kind of two-tone, again, very strong fragrance, but that blue foliage looks nice all the time, which uh, I, I like that about perennials uh, or certain perennials, I should say that you know, don't just offer you the flower color or the flower texture, things like that, that look nice even when they're not in bloom. So I really like that about this, uh, this particular Dianthus. Full sun, deer resistant, easy to grow, pretty, prob pretty problem free plant. Uh, not a lot of uh, issues with Dianthus. While we're talking uh, deer resistant and even rabbit resistant, this is a sage or salvia right here uh, called Rose Marvel. Um, this is um, a newer one for us, but I know colors don't come through all the time as well as uh, in person, but this is a very bright pinky purple uh, flower color. Typically salvia we think of as dark purples, uh, maybe even lighter blues. This is a very, very bright pinky purple 
Um, Medium-sized plant, 12 to 16 inches tall. Uh, fragrant foliage, resists deer, rabbits. Uh, pretty low in terms of uh, problem. Um, not a whole lot of issues at all. Free blooming plant, blooms a long time. One tip on uh, salvia, because I get a lot of people that have tried salvia and then they come up and they bloom and then it looks like the cat sat in the middle of it and it just kind of flops open and it's kind of dead in the center. Um, not all salvia do that, but if that does happen, you can take this plant right after it's done blooming. So this has been blooming actually for a couple weeks already. Got a little bit of greenhouse uh, encouragement. So the flowers keep blooming and blooming and blooming, but when it's all done, you're just gonna be left with a flower stalk with nothing there. You can take the entire plant like this and just take your pruning shears and just cut that right off. And it's gonna look like a little bit of a bad haircut and then it'll start reblooming almost uh, within a week usually. It, it reblooms very quickly. Um, and you can get multiple, multiple blooms out of these. So they'll bloom if you continually trim them back like that. You can get them to bloom from May all the way really until like September. Um, I've seen them blooming even later than that. So this is a really nice one. Sun mar or, uh, Rose Marvel, full sun, uh, 12 to 18 inches tall. All right, I have two cone flowers. Cone flowers are one of our best selling, uh, I guess, groups of uh, perennial plants. Uh, for good reason. There's a million different options. They are really, really colorful. They provide forage for the birds in the winter time. The cone, or the, um, which is basically the seed head of the plant, uh, the goldfinches absolutely love it. There's a lot of birds that eat it, but the goldfinches absolutely love it. Um, I've mentioned before, I leave mine up all winter long so that the birds can uh, pluck at those seed cones or seed heads. Um, but really beautiful plants. I brought two up here that are new. Uh, this one over here is called Orange You Awesome. Um, of course, it's not in bloom, so it's hard to see, but I did want to make sure that we that I brought some things up that are spring blooming, summer blooming, and even some late summer, fall blooming stuff. So Orange You Awesome has a really nice kind of, uh, uh, not quite pale orange, uh, maybe medium orange. It's not, you know, crazy bright like a pumpkin or something, but um, kind of a peachy orange, I guess, uh, colored flower. It gets about 18 to 24 inches tall. So in terms of cone flower, I would say that's a medium height. Some cone flowers can get three, three and a half. Some of them are very short. So this is kind of a medium sized one, um, but really nice orange color, which is kind of unique in cone flower. So I, I really like that one from Proven Winners called Orange You Awesome. And then this one is actually uh, really cool and brand new to us. This is part of a group called the Confection series. And this one is called Confections Lemon Drop. And again, don't have any flowers on this yet. It's a midsummer bloomer, but it's a true double flowering variety. So the double flowering cone flowers have where the traditional cone is, is a fuzzy flower. So this, in this case, it's going to be a fuzzy yellow flower in the middle. And then hanging down around the cone, are going to be bright yellow flower petals. So yellow fuzzy center, yellow petals hanging downward. Really cool plant. This one's a little shorter, about 15 to 18 inches tall. It's called Lemon Drop. It's a, it's a nice yellow too. It's a nice like medium to light yellow. Um, real pretty plant. So I think that's gonna be a real winner in the garden. This is um, a Baptisia or false indigo here. Um, this particular one is called Pink Truffles. We have a bunch of different varieties of Baptisia nowadays. Um, they've done a lot of breeding on these over the last, you know, five to eight years. Um, the traditional, uh, as the name suggests, false indigo is a bright blue color. Um, now we have pinks and yellows and dark blues and light blues and purples. Um, so a bunch of different varieties. This is a very tall perennial. This is gonna get 36, maybe even 40 inches tall. So it's a pretty big perennial. It almost uh, creates like a shrub-like look in the landscape. So certainly give this some room. Um, as, it, as it grows, it'll be full at the bottom. You'll have this big kind of shrubby-like plant. Um, big thick stems, does not need any extra help or support. You know, sometimes a little bit weak when they're young and in a pot like this. But as these stems form, like I said, it's almost shrub-like, you know, thick, hardy stems, don't need any extra support. The bumblebees absolutely love these, honeybees love them. 
Um, really cool plant and again available in all different colors but pink truffles as the name suggests is pink but it's also got this light yellowy green uh, almost looks like someone took a brush stroke right up through the middle of the flower so it gives it sort of a two-tone appearance. Um, this is a variety from Proven Winners. Easy to grow, uh, full sun, very hardy, neat plant. This is another introduction from Proven Winners. Um, Proven Winners uh, has really been uh, on their game in terms of perennial development. Um, this one here is a, a penstemon or a beard tongue is a common name for it. And this particular one is called Midnight Masquerade. This is probably, uh, in my opinion, uh, of everything we've brought up here, the absolute easiest to grow perennial you can find. I've never had issues with the deer or rabbits munching on these at home. Um, I have the native uh, variety uh, Penstemon digitalis. Um, I have uh, some other cultivars like this. I don't have this one yet. Um, Midnight Marvel um, starts off kind of green. As soon as the sun gets nice and intense, the whole plant is going to turn a very nice dark burgundy color, similar to what you see up here at the top. So it gets this really nice burgundy color, burgundy stem color, and then this you know, really nice lavender purple flower. So um, it's very hardy. It's very easy to grow. This is a sterile variety. So like the native uh, Penstemon digitalis um, is a free seeding variety. So it will tend to seed and relocate uh, pretty readily, I guess. Um, this is a sterile variety, so it will not, um, it will not reseed itself in your garden, um, which is nice. So a nice big clump. Um, this, it, it blooms for a long time, so this would also do really well in a container as a, uh, um, you know, uh, I guess we haven't done a whole lot with uh, annual containers or, you know, container planting here on this program, um, but we try to follow, a, you know, a, a, um, I guess an adage or whatever that uh, many people have used before us um, for container design, and it's a filler, spiller, and thriller. So if you've never done that, the uh, thriller is the big plant in the middle or towards the back of the container. The filler are going to be the plants around the outside that provide some color and interest. And then a spiller is something that would spill over the side of the pot. So if you're designing pots, try that. But this would make a really nice thriller. It's big. It blooms for a long time. The bumblebees, hummingbirds, and uh, honeybees all absolutely love this plant. It will bloom for most of the summer, so it's a long bloom time. Um, I would say it's going to start blooming in maybe two weeks or so, and then it'll basically bloom uh, for the good, you know, good majority of the summer. But the leaves are cool, the stem color is cool, the flowers are beautiful, so that would be nice. And then at the end of the season, you could probably just dig this up and plant it in the soil, uh, and then it would come back next year. So um, that would be a nice thing to do. So this is called Midnight Masquerade. So this is, this is a plant, again, not a totally um, new exactly, but uh, this variety is a little newer to us, and uh, we've got some good numbers of it finally. This is a plant, um, traditionally, commonly, I guess it goes by the name of Red Hot Poker. Um, as you can see, this is not red. Um, so this is uh, a plant called Mango Popsicle Nephophia, or Red Hot Poker. Um, so this, as the name suggests, mango, has this really nice yellowy orange flower. They're little tubular flowers. The hummingbirds love these. Um, good for the pollinators for sure. Very, um, very, very drought tolerant plant. Um, when people lose them, it tends to be because the soil is too heavy. Not a big fan of clay. So if you've got a heavy clay, you may want to uh, really amend the soil well. Um, for soil amendment, you can use something like our one-step soil conditioner. That's a really good, as the name suggests, soil conditioner. So work that into your clay or uh, even remove some of the clay and use this as your backfill. Um, but they do not uh, love extra moisture or sitting in moisture. So if you have a heavy clay, oftentimes you develop a root rot because the, the water down low sits down there and it just starts to develop root rot. Um, the, the foliage is almost um, almost like that of some of the agaves and, and yuccas and things like that. So you can, you can see it definitely has that drought tolerance uh, kind of built into it. But cool plant, blooms for quite a while during the summertime. They're available in the popsicle series, is available in a bunch of different colors. So this is a mango popsicle, 
Um, there's a few other popsicles as well. So there's a red one, there's a yellow one. Um, and I think there's a kind of an orangey, you know, more orange uh, than this. So cool plant and uh, kind of gives you a really neat tropical feel. Also would do really well in a container for sure, because, you know, then you have a well-drained uh, planting location. This is a shade plant right here called Ruby Slippers Polygonatum or uh, Solomon's Seal. So uh, Solomon's Seal has uh, traditionally arching stems that are green or even like a blue-green color with this um, really unique pattern to the foliage. It's an alternating leaf pattern, really pretty. Um, I like the texture of the plant and then it develops these little white flowers that kind of dangle off uh, under the side of the uh, leaf there along the leaf stem. This variety though, Ruby Slippers, um, has been grown and chosen for these really bright red stems. So those arching stems with the green leaves and white flowers and then red stem really offers some nice color contrast. This is um, a shade loving plant. So it doesn't, is not gonna want hot sun. So kind of a woodland or shade type plant. Um, this is not one of the native uh, Solomon seal. There are some native Solomon seal. This is a Japanese um, Solomon seal, but very well suited to our area. Very, actually very hardy, even though it looks really delicate, um, it's really hardy. This is gonna go great with your hostas. It's gonna go great with your coral bells. It's gonna go really nice with ferns, um, but really a, a cool plant for a, a nice shady spot. Um, this was new, I think a year or two ago. Uh, I know, I think it was two years ago. So I believe this came out in 2020. Uh, it's an allium called serendipity. Um, 2020 release, people were asking for it. We couldn't get our hands on hardly any of them. Um, it was very difficult to find. 2021, we had some decent numbers of it, watched the plant, really liked it. Um, it is, uh, was chosen for the blue foliage color, which again, I know is a little harder to see here and it hasn't even fully developed on this plant yet. But um, one of the things with Allium, Allium are a deer resistant, rabbit resistant, perennial, kind of an onion smelling, uh, not onion, they are an onion, so um, onion smelling, foliage, um, especially if you break it. Uh, deer and rabbit resistant for sure, really holds up well. Um, it's gonna develop a stalk that comes up and then a little golf ball sized um, purple flower. So serendipity was chosen because it has a darker, a little darker purple flower, but it has the blue foliage. So a lot of the allium have green foliage. This has more of the blue color. So blue colored foliage, purple flowers, very long bloom time. Um, really hardy perennial, very easy to grow. This is another one of those perennials, like I mentioned, that um, even when it's not in bloom, I think they look great. I have some allium at home. I do not have serendipity in the garden yet, um, but I have a bunch of summer beauty allium, nice full clumps right now. They're about, each one of them is probably that far across, maybe 12 to 18 inches. They're about 12 maybe-ish inches tall right now, but very nice, slightly twisted green foliage, um, just looks great. I have some azaleas behind it, which are in full bloom right now, Karen's azalea, and then in front of that are the allium. It looks great. Then the azaleas are going to stop blooming, and then my summer allium is going to start blooming. So serendipity is a great variety. We're growing these in-house because we, like I said, had trouble getting a hold of them and uh, really like this plant a lot. So we grew, I think, 140 of them or something for this season. So Great perennial. The honeybees absolutely love it. The butterflies love it. The bumblebees love it. So really a neat plant and it blooms for a long time. When it's all done blooming, if you want to cut off the, the flower stalks and stems, that's perfectly acceptable. And this foliage will stay great until we get a hard frost. So nice, easy to grow, deer, rabbit, drought resistant, all that kind of stuff. So makes for a pretty easy growing plant. Um, this is a an introduction from a couple years ago called Cat's Pajamas Nepeta or Cat Mint. Um, this is definitely one of those that uh, we have had um, but had very uh, very limited supply the last year, year and a half, but is finally in good supply. Cat's Pajamas is a little shorter than some of the other varieties. It is a sterile variety, so it is not going to reseed itself. It blooms earlier 
very bright purple. Some are light, you know, some catmint are light blue. Some are purple. This has a really nice true purple color to it. It has a minty fragrance. It is deer and rabbit resistant. It's insect resistant. It's just a very easy to grow plant. I would use this as a border plant. It only gets about 12 or 18 inches high. Um, this is going to go really wonderfully with shrub roses, with uh, taller like coneflower, things like that. Uh, really easy to grow plant. Um, and again, not as aggressive as some of the older varieties that readily reseed themselves. So really nice clumping plant, grows fast and hardy, and is uh, drought resistant as well. So that's a, that's a cool one. Both of these are relatively new. This one is brand new. This is the first year that this is uh, available to the, to the market. It's a sedum called Back in Black. Um, it's a proven winner's variety. As the summer progresses, the foliage is going to get darker and darker. Right now it's like a burgundy green. Uh, it's gonna keep getting darker to become almost burgundy black. Um, it has kind of a pinkish red flower in the fall. Uh, it's a little taller variety, 18, maybe 24 inches tall. Um, good for late season for the pollinators. They love, you know, especially the humming, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, bumblebees and honeybees absolutely love those in the fall. Um, so th that's a really nice one. This is a really cool seed, and we've had it for a couple of years, but it's just really difficult to get good numbers on it. Um, but we finally have some decent, uh, decent supply. This is a sedum called Dream Dazzler, and it's a tri-colored sedum. So it has pink, burgundy, and green foliage. And as, again, as the summer goes on and as we have more sun, the color gets more vibrant and more vibrant. Just really, really pretty. This is a little lower mounded type sedum. It's not a tall upright sedum. Um, we can rarely keep this plant in stock, um, but we also haven't had great numbers of it. Good numbers this year, hardy, very drought tolerant, great for a border, great for rock gardens. Um, but the color on this is really hard to beat. I think, I think almost every staff member probably has one at home because every time they come in, uh, you know, someone wants to grab one because they're just such a cool plant. So this is part of a group of uh, hardy hibiscus or perennial hibiscus. This, is, uh, this one is called Edge of Night. It is brand new to garden centers this year. Um, we have never had this before. Edge of Night develops a burgundy, almost black foliage on it with a big, bright pink flower with a slight red to the center. It's a little shorter than some of the varieties. It is not short though. It gets about 36, uh, maybe 40 inches tall. Um, some of the perennial hibiscus can get five, maybe even a bit taller than that feet tall. Um, so this is, in terms of perennial hibiscus, it's a little shorter. It is a shrub-like plant. It develops thick, almost woody stems that you'd swear would uh, survive the winter, but they never do. Um, those stems will die all the way to the ground. Um, so care on this, it's full sun, ample moisture, um, very hardy and easy to grow. Uh, I typically give people just a couple of tips on this. One, don't count it out. Um, at home, uh, I don't know if, I don't even, I don't think that our hardy hibiscus are showing any signs of life yet. Um, they typically start coming out of the ground uh, right around mid to late May, right around this time of year. Obviously, the, we had a very cool April and early May. I don't know if they're going to be even later than normal, um, but everybody always thinks that they're, you know, what, whatever they planted, they think that they're dead the following year because nothing is happening and the stems are all dried out and everything. They're not. They almost always come back. Uh, they're just very, very late to leaf out. But as soon as they start growing and, and we start to get some heat because they're a warm, loving plant, then they will shoot out. These actually got some greenhouse encouragement to get them to this point. Um, you probably can't see it very well, but right down at the bottom, you'll see last year's uh, stems. They look woody, but they're not, um, and they are dried out and dead. Normally, what I recommend is to leave your stems up all winter long. The center of the stem on these hardy hibiscus is hollow. And when you cut those ends off, or if you cut it all the way down, you create like a little hollow straw that allows the cold to penetrate down into the root system further. That can cause root damage and or death. So I leave my stems up all winter long. They're not super attractive, but 
I'm not out in the yard in the wintertime anyway. So I leave those big tall stems up and then right around the you know middle of April because they're never leafing out prior to that, uh, middle to end of April, I cut all of those stems off all the way down as low as I possibly can to the ground. Sometimes I need heavy duty pruning shears. Sometimes I even need a pruning saw. I have stems sometimes that are inch, inch and a half across and are, like I said, almost woody uh, feeling, but um, they are not alive even though they you know, look really sturdy, they're not. So cut it off all the way at the ground. It is going to come back from the ground, from the soil. It's not gonna come back from the base of any of those stems or anything. It's gonna come back from the soil. So cut it down as low as you possibly can. Some of the bigger varieties might need a little uh, support or help um, to keep them sturdy. Uh, initially, some of the shorter varieties don't at all, but really pretty plant. They start blooming in um, midsummer and then typically bloom almost until uh, uh, early fall. So long bloom time, big flowers, tropical look, but actually hardy here. So we call them hardy hibiscus or perennial hibiscus. And um, it's a, a really, really cool plant. You can use it in mass. You could use it as a border, like a shrub border almost. Um, great around pools, decks, patios to kind of give you that real tropical vibe during the summertime. Um, also great in the middle of a perennial bed, just something that's gonna come up out of the center with other blooming perennials around it, maybe earlier blooming perennials since this is a later blooming perennial. Um, so you could pair this with, you know, literally just about anything because it's such a big full plant. Uh, anything is gonna uh, go well with it. So this one's called Edge of Night. It's part of the Summerific series. We have a whole bunch of these, a um, uh, whole bunch of the, the Summerific series hibiscus. So there's white flowering varieties, there's red flowering varieties, there's pink flowering, there's white with pink, white with red, all different uh, textures and colors. There's some that have green foliage, some that have burgundy foliage. So, you know, whatever you're looking for, there's probably a plant to uh, fill, that, uh, fill that spot. So, um, cool plant. Lots of stuff to choose from uh, this weekend. Hopefully you'll get a chance to get outside um, and get a little planting done. So until next time, thanks for watching. And uh, as always, come see us.